Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you're a stock photographer, you might be wondering what kind of photos do people really want to buy? What sells? I have tons of videos where I talk about this, but today I have a special guest with me. He is a Shutterstock customer and he frequently purchases photos on Shutterstock that he uses for his own business. So today he's going to talk about what kind of photos he chooses to download and what kind of photos he wishes that more photographers would upload. So definitely stay tuned because he's got lots of valuable information from a customer perspective that will help you increase your sales on Shutterstock if you really take his advice to heart. Rob, can you briefly introduce yourself? Thanks, Nicole. I appreciate you having me on your channel. My name is Rob. I'm the founder of Trip Hacks DC. Trip Hacks DC is a YouTube channel where I have tips, tricks, and travel hacks for people who are coming to visit Washington DC. And then we're also a tour company, so I love to have people come on tour with me or one of my other tour guides when they come and we'll show you around, show you the sites, and uh, Make sure you have a great time when you visit here in DC. So it is my understanding that you are a Shutterstock customer and you often go on Shutterstock.com to find photos and download for your own business. Can you tell me a little bit about how you use these photos for your business? Sure. So I use Shutterstock photos because I do a lot of videos for my YouTube channel, like I said. I also have an ebook that I published last year and I'm going to be updating again this year. And so I really want people who are learning about Washington DC, not just to read about the things that you can do here or to watch me talk about the things that you can see here, but to actually see what they look like. And so in a lot of cases I go out, you know, I'm a tour guide, I'm out on the National Mall a lot, I capture a lot of my own photos and videos, but I'm just one person and I can't be everywhere. And sometimes I, I just need a piece of footage, uh, whether it's a video or a photo, in a lot of cases that I can incorporate into my videos or into my, my other materials. Awesome. Can you give me a few examples of some photos that you have downloaded from Shutterstock and tell me why you downloaded these photos? Sure. So I think we'll uh, pull some of these up on the screen as we're talking about them. Uh, but the first one that I downloaded was a, a photo of a big crowd using the Metro Escalator. And I, I downloaded this one because I needed a photo that shows what the Metro looks like on days when it gets really crowded. So this photo in particular is a, a protest, which we have a lot of in DC. I know you've attended many of them as a photographer, and so you know what they look like. But this is not something that I can very easily get myself because, you know, I have to be at the right place at the right time. Most of the time when I'm riding Metro, it's just a normal day and it doesn't look like this. Another one is this photo of these guys riding these motorcycles. For folks who are uh, unfamiliar with Washington DC, we have an event over Memorial Day weekend called Rolling Thunder. And this is a tradition that goes back many years. Veterans, uh, war veterans will ride their Harley Davidson motorcycles to DC uh, to honor some of the, the folks who died in, in our country's wars. And so this is an event that, unless you're here on that one day when they're doing their memorial ride, you, you can't get a photo of it. And I, and I needed a photo of it, but um, I couldn't you know, go into the future to get a photo uh, so I needed to buy one and that's what I, I came to Shutterstock for. This next one is, is along similar lines. This is a photo of the Pride Parade, which we have uh, in June every year here in DC. And I wanted to show that when you come to DC in June, this is something that you can expect. You can expect to see Pride events throughout the city. But I recorded my video in May, and so I didn't have any photos of previous Pride events because I never expected that I would need one. So uh, I went to Shutterstock and got this one and it worked perfectly for what I needed it for. And I just want to add to that, pride is actually a super popular topic, not only in Washington DC, but all around the United States. So taking photos of a pride event in this city could actually be useful for, you know, people all over the world when they're talking about LGBT issues. That's a great point. I know that this photo is, is in DC because I recognize the street, but for, for most people, I think that this could be used to just show pride in any city. So this next one is the changing of the guard at Arlington National Cemetery. This is uh, something that happens every day at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, a very powerful event, something that I recommend that all visitors come and see and do. But I don't have a great photo of this because I'm not a professional photographer and it's hard to get a good photo of uh, the guard when you, know, you just have a, a phone camera, which I do. So I wanted a really good close-up photo of these guys and I couldn't get it myself. So Shutterstock's the perfect place to go find it. And this one is of the Marine Corps Marathon, which is another event that only happens one time per year. So it's really important that if I want to talk about it, that I have a photo of it because it's not something that I can just run out, run down the street and get a photo of when I need it. This one is a sign and you think, well, it's kind of boring. It's just a sign that says do not enter. But if you look really closely, you'll see that the White House is in the background there. And so Unfortunately, Pennsylvania Avenue near the White House is closed a lot for security and other various reasons. And so to be able to show that um, you know, it's closed a lot when I'm talking about it and show the sign is actually the perfect example. 
And this is a photo of Reagan National Airport, which I think you're gonna ask me a little bit later about photos I wish I had. And airport photos are photos that I always wish I had more of because they're just not a lot of them out there, but a big part of being a, a travel channel and having a book, an ebook about travel is the, the air aspect of it. And so being able to show people what the airports look like and what they can expect when they travel through them is a big important part of it. I can definitely see why you downloaded these photos. What's interesting is that all of these photos are actually editorial photos. People here on YouTube often ask me what makes more money, commercial or editorial photos? And that's a hard one to answer. Technically, there is the potential to earn more from a commercial photo because there is the chance that somebody might buy an extended license, which you can't necessarily do with editorial photos. But that's a big if. In my opinion, most people on Shutterstock do not buy extended licenses. They have some sort of subscription plan. And if you're just downloading photos on that subscription plan, you're gonna get the same amount from a commercial and an editorial photo. That's exactly right. And I honestly didn't even realize when I was downloading these photos that it mattered. You know, when I searched for a photo of Changing of the Guard, it didn't matter to me whether it was editorial or not. I just needed that photo. And so because I'm using everything in an editorial way, I don't even, you know, make that distinction when I'm looking for them. Yeah. So it is interesting and it did stand out to me that all of the photos that you've talked about so far have been editorial photos. Now I'm curious, which photos of mine have you downloaded so far? Or give me just a few examples. Well, you've got a lot of great photos, so I have actually purchased many of yours. And so the first one is a photo of some people riding segways. And the reason that I really like this one is because it shows the White House in the background, which means that it's not just a generic Segway tour or, you know, an ad for the Segway company. It's very clearly showing that in DC, this is a type of tour that you can take. So this is one of a Smart Trip card, which is the card that you'll buy when you want to ride the Metro and when you come and visit DC. And I was surprised that there aren't very many of these on Shutterstock. So it's not a very oversaturated topic. But the reason I like yours as well is because it doesn't just show the card, you know, on a table or a flat surface. It shows the Metro train in the background with that cool blurred effect that I know you can talk more about. But I really like that. That's what it looks like. Yeah. And that is my hand. Should have done my nails that day. <laughs> This is the photo that you took of the National Gallery of Arts Sculpture Garden Ice Skating Rink. And I talk about ice skating all the time. It is one of the best winter things that you can do when you visit DC. And I just don't have good photos of people ice skating. And I looked at yours and they were perfect. And so I use this photo probably more than any of the others that I use for winter, showing winter in DC. I know you've talked about this one in your videos previously, but I did buy one of your photos of trash. The National Mall does unfortunately get trashed. Uh, sorry for the pun after big events because there just aren't enough garbage cans for all the people who are coming and um, using the facility. So after a big event, the trash cans are often overflowing until the garbage men can come around and clean it up. And so I wanted a photo that perfectly shows that and yours is the perfect one to do that. Thanks. You know, I've often said that trash can sell and uh, you know, he kind of just reconfirms that. So it might look like trash, but it might actually have some value. And then this one is a couple parking meters, which is a really great photo for when I want to talk about parking in DC. Uh, if you are planning to visit DC, don't get a rental car at the airport. I don't recommend trying to drive and park, but if you do, uh, we have garages and you can always park at these meters. So when I talk about parking in meters, this is a great photo to put up to, to show what they look like. That's super interesting. And again, all the photos that you mentioned that you downloaded from me are also editorial photos. Now, give me a little bit of criticism. Can you tell me which photos of mine you are absolutely not interested in downloading at all? Okay, well, I went back and looked through your photo stream and you have a lot of photos. Obviously, I didn't buy every single one, so I found a few that I passed on, even though it seems like something I might be interested in, and I'll give you a little bit of insight on why. So the first one is a photo of the Washington Monument, and the reason I passed on this is because when I look at my phone, I have more photos of the Washington Monument than anything else. And it's just a photo that I don't need because it's very easy for me to get. I'm out here, you know, every other night with my tour groups. And so if I want a photo of the Washington Monument, I can very easily get it on my own. That makes sense. I often say, you know, these popular tourist attractions that everybody is photographing, there's already hundreds of thousands or maybe even millions of them on Shutterstock. So you're probably not going to have a lot of luck with them. And that goes for uh, my photos as well. So this is a photo that you took at Gravelly Point in Arlington, Virginia, and I love the photo. It's actually a really cool uh, way to show what it looks like when you go. You know, the planes are flying literally over your head. It looks like you can reach up and touch them if you wanted to. But the reason I passed on this photo is that it's in portrait, and I almost exclusively need landscape photos. 
both for my YouTube videos, when I make a thumbnail, and for my ebook, I need landscape size photos. And so if I was gonna try to do something with this, I would have to crop it and it would really kind of ruin, you know, the great art that you've made here. So great photo, but for my very specific purposes, I just can't use it. And same thing with this one, Albert Einstein. This is an amazing memorial, and I actually have used photos of this in my videos and in my ebook, but I need the landscape size one. So I passed on this one because I do uh, often use photos of police cars in my, my videos to demonstrate, you know, what you can expect when you visit the White House, for example, and there's Secret Service everywhere. But this is a photo of a generic police car, so you can't see any of the logos, you can't see what city it belongs to or what agency. And so I just passed on it because you have photos that are of very specific police agency cars, and, and those are the ones I want, not the more generic one like this one. And then this one is a photo of everyone's favorite or least favorite, depending on your perspective, brutalist building in Washington, D.C., the FBI headquarters. And the reason I passed on this one is because it, it's hard for the average person to tell what this is. Uh, when we watch TV shows or movies about the FBI, they always show a very specific shot of the corner of the building from Pennsylvania Avenue, and that's the angle that I wanted when I showed the FBI building, because that's the one that I feel like people would recognize, and, and this one's a little tougher to tell what it is. And did you find that angle on Shutterstock? I did, but it was from someone else, sorry. Oh, okay. That's unfortunate, but good to know. Okay, so this information is very valuable. So just to sum it up, these photos were either already saturated on Shutterstock, they were either portrait sizing and not useful for your purposes, or not specific enough and not showing the information that you wanted the photos to show. For example, the name of the police department or having that angle that shows the FBI building. So basically what this goes to show, customers might be looking for very, very specific images. You know, I always say to you guys that the more you can get away from saturated topics and try to photograph more niche topics or topics that are not yet photographed on Shutterstock, the more likely you are to make sales on the platform. Now, has there ever been a time where you really needed some photos from Shutterstock, but you just couldn't find what you were looking for? Yes, all the time. Give me some examples. Well, the biggest one is food and restaurants. So we have a big food hall here in DC called Union Market. It's an amazing place. I highly recommend everyone check it out when you visit. But there are almost no photos of it on Shutterstock. There are, I think, two photos right now that I found earlier today, and they're both of the exterior of the building. So what I wanna show is what it looks like inside, what kind of restaurants you can go to, what the coffee shops look like, you know, the fun that people are having exploring the different vendors. But if I want those photos, I gotta make a trip to Union Market and go get it myself. And the same goes for restaurants. Uh, people ask me for restaurant recommendations all the time, and uh, I, I'd love to give some of my favorites, but when I go out to eat, uh, photographing the interior of the restaurant isn't always at the top of my mind, so I don't have a lot of photos of insides of restaurants, and unfortunately, this is uh, just completely missing on Shutterstock, at least in DC right now. Interesting. You know, I have noticed that photos that I take of restaurants and like small businesses, they do get downloaded a lot, but you know, there's definitely so many more that are not photographed already. And that's like a good place for Shutterstock photographers to really start filling in the gaps. Well, when I looked on Shutterstock, I found photos of very specific foods, but not that sort of show the business itself. So for example, in DC, Ethiopian food is, is huge and it's delicious and I, I love eating it. But when I search for Ethiopian food, there's lots of close-ups of the dish, of the, uh, the bread, of the meats, and of, of the things that go on top, but not very many of an actual business with the people who are working there or the people who are there enjoying it. And another big missing category for me is hotels and airports. So uh, we just don't have a lot of photos of our three airports here, the interiors specifically. There are some exterior photos, but I wanna show people when they fly into Baltimore Washington Airport, what can they expect? And there just aren't any photos on Shutterstock that can help me tell that story. So if I wanna do that, I've gotta go up to the airport and get the photos myself, which can be kind of a trip, especially when I don't have a, a flight planned. That actually reminds me of another video that I made here on this channel, which is basically giving tips and tricks for taking stock photos while you travel. And while you're traveling, sometimes it's really beneficial to document the process of traveling, not just the destination. And that means taking photos in airports or maybe taking photos of, you know, a plane ticket, of course, like make sure your personal information is, on, is not on there. So definitely think outside of the box and instead of just photographing the destination, focus on the process of traveling. Along those lines, hotels as well. There's a lot of non-editorial photos of hotels on Shutterstock, but they're very clearly staged, uh, you know, person working at the check-in desk, and it, it just looks kind of phony, to be completely honest. I would love a photo of a, a specific DC hotel, like the Mayflower or the Hay Adams, 
that actually shows people, real people, checking into the hotel, the workers, you know, accommodating them. That would be something that I would love to have, that I would look for. Keep that in mind. Okay, wow, this is a lot of information. So basically what we can conclude is you're not really looking for that beautiful, picture-perfect type of photography. You're looking for very specific places and very specific types of images that are not on Shutterstock already, and a lot of times you can't find exactly what you need. Shutterstock has more than 260 million images on its website. But as you and I can both see, there's so much that's missing from the platform. And that means there's also a lot of potential for photographers who sign up on Shutterstock today to actually make a lot of money through the platform if they can target those types of photos that are not on there already. Like we've said before, they don't need to upload their most beautiful artwork, their most beautiful photos, and sometimes I even recommend that they don't upload their most valuable work if it would crush them to see that being downloaded for less than what they think it's worth. But there is a lot of potential to upload other types of photos that might not necessarily be the most beautiful artwork that they have, and they can make good sales through simply providing what is missing from the platform. And don't get me wrong, I've bought some of the beautiful ones too. One of them that I bought has been behind my head this whole time, so you can see it's, it's not like I'm only buying photos of trash cans, but uh, I do often need the very specific things. And the photo of the Capitol, this is a particularly beautiful one, but that means that probably thousands of other photographers didn't get their photo of the Capitol downloaded because I, I found the one I needed and I moved on. Yeah, and that actually brings up another good point. Even if you're taking a photo of a trash can or just, you know, a simple snapshot of a restaurant that might seem a little boring, make sure that the quality of your photo is also up to par. That means learn the basics of your camera. Make sure that the photos look as professional as you can make them look. So even a photo of a trash can can look professional as long as you know a little bit about camera basics. So for anyone who is coming to Washington DC, this city is absolutely fantastic for photography. As you guys know, Rob right here is a tour guide in Washington DC. And if you wanna see as many places as you can in a short amount of time, I definitely recommend that you take one of Rob's tours because he will show you all of the best attractions and landmarks that this city has to offer. So if you're a photographer, take your camera with you and join one of his tours. And a little plus is that a lot of his tours actually take place during golden hour, which allows you to get those fantastic shots of DC at sunset and before and after sunset. I'll link to Rob's channel as well as his website in the description below, so definitely check it out. So thank you so much, Rob, for giving us some of your insights as a Shutterstock customer. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button, and I will see you guys in the next video.